In this video, we'll be looking at EVO-DEVO, or Evolutionary Developmental Biology, from a comparative embryology perspective. So the first evolutionary approach to development was by Ernst Haeckel in the 1800s, who you may remember from earlier in the course. And he had this idea that ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Ontogeny is the development of an organism. Recapitulates means to like redo. And then phylogeny is the evolutionary history of an organism. So his idea was that the developing organism develops through its previous evolutionary forms until it reaches its final form, right? So the developmental trajectory is just copying the evolutionary history. And so by this model, the way evolution works is just by adding extra steps of development on the end of whatever the ancestor's development was, right? So things evolve by adding onto the end of their development to get new adult forms. And that's why you can just go back through development and see the evolutionary history of an organism. So Haeckel saw evidence for this in the, in the similarity of developing mammal embryos to fish amphibians. And he made a very famous drawing, which is this next slide. So this is a diagram that Haeckel made. So he's German, so these words are all in, in German. But so we've, we've got salamanders here. So they start off like this, and then they develop, and they end up like this. And then we've got a number of other things here. So here are some, this is a turtle, right? Starts off looking basically like a salamander, develops into a turtle. This is a, a chicken, right? Starts off looking just like the turtle, develops into a chicken. And then here are four different types of mammals, including humans. And they start off looking just like these guys, and then they develop, and then they develop into this. And so when Heckel looked at this, he kind of saw, oh, well, these guys, they kind of look a lot like these guys, or maybe like these guys. So it looked to him like they were developing through their evolutionary history when he looked at this. So it turns out that Haeckel's model is really nice for motivation and kind of not too bad for the 1800s, but doesn't really hold up that well under modern scientific scrutiny. Um, this book by Stephen Jay Gould, which I also mentioned earlier in the course, was him going back and revisiting Haeckel's ideas with 20th century ideas and understanding. Some of the problems include that the adult features of ancestors are not actually really seen as they would have been predicted by Heckel, right? We don't see the adult features of fish during our developmental trajectory, which we would expect to see under his model. Some species skip developmental steps. So there are, for example, direct developing sea urchins, which they kind of take a shortcut in their development. They don't have every step in their development like their close relatives do. And that doesn't seem to make any sense if evolution works by adding steps on the end of development. Development of traits doesn't proceed at the same relative rates in all organisms, so there's lots of differences in the timing of developmental events. And some species appear to cut development short. Instead of adding steps at the end, there do appear to be what are called pedomorphic organisms that don't appear to have taken their development out further than their ancestors, they actually appear to have stopped their development earlier than their ancestors, which is something that Haeckel would not have thought possible. So these weaknesses were actually known fairly quickly, but people couldn't really do too much about it. They kind of knew it wasn't the full answer, but they didn't have the technology. And it was only in the 20th century when we had better mathematical approaches and DNA technology that we could use to de explain development um, that we were able to make progress. So, Although Heckel came up with his proposal and made people think, better tools to explain development had to come a century later.